Apple has previewed the latest update coming to the Mac, macOS Sequoia, which brings a litany of new features to the company's most powerful machines. Let me show you the best ones. I've got to start with general quality of life improvements. Window placement, for example. They can now snap to the position on your screen. Drag them to the edge or the corner and they'll snap to that position. Or you can press the green circle in the corner to preview where they can be placed. If you want to get fancy about it, you can tie these to keyboard shortcuts so they can jump to their designated destinations with just the press of a key. Apple does a great job with portrait mode when using the camera to give your background a slight blur. Using the same segmentation technology, you can now just swap your background. I know a bunch of you know, apps already did this, but now it's native. There are a bunch of stock ones to choose from, or you can choose your own photos. This works system-wide anytime you're using the built-in cameras. As another bonus, you can get a presenter preview before sharing your screen. You see exactly what they'll see before they see it, so you can make sure you don't have anything open, like your password manager or something like that. By the way, Apple does include a stock password management app this year. Pretty cool. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the new wallpaper options. Everyone loves a good wallpaper refresh, and aside from the cool Sequoia ones, there are these retro Mac ones that I'm obsessed with. Which, if any of these new wallpapers, do you like the most? Shout it out down below in the comments. Since macOS Sequoia shipped in beta, users have been ecstatic about this feature that expands continuity, iPhone mirroring. With this, both your iPhone screen and the notifications get routed to your Mac. It doesn't just mirror your iPhone though. You can interact with it using your Mac's keyboard and mouse. Swipe through it, open apps, type, even audio is forwarded to your computer's speakers at least most audio, this doesn't work with copyrighted content, like including videos. So you can't connect your iPhone and watch like Disney Plus through your Mac. You could theoretically play games this way too, though I'm not sure why you would, but it's possible. Maybe some like clicker game where you gotta like check in frequently or something and you don't wanna grab your phone. I don't know. I love the notifications too. There are a lot that are routed through your phone that you may not see on your Mac ones like my son's smart crib, those alerts now show up on my Mac alongside other notifications so there's no need to grab my phone. I can see my son is awake, tap that notification to open up iPhone mirroring, and view his monitor live, all while my iPhone stays in my pocket. Or more conveniently, perched in standby mode. That way I can keep up my clock, calendar, or other widgets, and I don't have to keep picking up my phone and putting it back down. If all of that wasn't enough, the best part is yet to come. You can fully drag and drop media and files between your iPhone and your Mac. Drag files from your Mac's download folder just right onto your iPhone screen into an app that you have open on your phone. This won't be available at launch, but it should arrive by the end of the year. Let's pause for a second. I gotta thank my sponsor for this video, ESR. If you've got an iPhone, you, you probably need to charge it at some point. And if you know anything about me, you know that I love MagSafe and She2 chargers, and ESR has a pair of new ones that I am totally stoked to show you. This is the ESR Qi2 3-in-1 Travel Wireless Charger. When it's folded, it's barely thicker than my iPhone. And when you open it up, you have a Qi2 charger right there on the front that'll give you 15 watts of wireless power. Then around back, you'll find a little pedestal for your AirPods or other Qi device to charge and the USB-C port where you can plug in that Apple Watch charger. By the way, this supports Apple certified fast charging, which means you can charge an Apple Watch Ultra to 100% in an hour and 40 minutes, which is four and a half times faster than other two and a half watt chargers. Since it can be used as a stand, it works great for standby mode too. See your little alarm clock, see widgets, or just watch a video. This is the ESR Qi2 Mini Wireless Charger. It magnetically connects to the back of your iPhone, has an integrated braided USB-C cable with even a metal cover on the end of it. This will charge your iPhone at up to 15 watts of power, which is the maximum wireless charging for your iPhone 12, 13, 14, or 15. That 15 watts is super quick. Since it is Qi2 certified, you can charge your iPhone 15 Pro Max to 85% in just two hours, which is twice as fast as a standard seven and a half watt charger. Not only do these have great quality, but they're also really affordable. If you wanna check any of them out, there's links from down below in the description. Thanks again to ESR for sponsoring this video. 
while iPhone mirroring, your iPhone stays locked and it doesn't show anything on the screen, so no one else can see what you're doing. Even in beta, this looks super smooth. Look at this amazing animation that Aaron shared on Twitter. I love it. The polish here is incredible. It's not just me though. It seems like this feature will be a hit with social media blowing up over this newfound mirroring ability. You've been able to forward iPhone messages to your Mac for a while now, but it's better with macOS Sequoia. The Messages app has new font stylings to help your text stand out. Bold, underline, italics, strike through, work, plus several animations. Make the text wiggle, enlarge, jump, or even explode. These work on emoji too. Speaking of emoji, Tapback works with any of the Unicode characters. You aren't limited to just heart, thumbs up or down, or question marks. Those ones still do exist, but Apple did inject them with a shot of color, making them look even better. My favorite feature with messages though is send later. You just pick a time and date that you want your message to be delivered and boom, good to go. This feature has long been available on Android and I'll admit, I've been hoping to see this one come to Apple's platforms. Notes got a big upgrade this year with an array of new features. Audio can be recorded directly into the Notes app, which then gets transcribed. Like on the mobile counterparts, that transcription is summarized on the top, which makes it easy to preview what's in the note. All this is searchable too, so you can find it down the line. Math Notes, which is especially cool on iPad, check out that whole dedicated video here to learn more about Math Notes and other iPad OS 18 features, works on the Mac. You can do calculations, write in notes, and see ones that sync from your other devices. I personally use the Notes app a lot. And one of those use cases is creating running documents that track the changes in all the latest Apple betas. So I'll make one note for each update, like iOS 18, and then I'll add new sections for each beta that gets released and all the changes that I find. In Sequoia, these are collapsible sections, which drastically will help my organization. I think this is great. AV enthusiasts will be thrilled to know that with this update, the Mac now supports HDMI pass-through for Dolby content, including Atmos. So if your Mac is connected to a TV or soundbar, audio is passed directly to that external device, unaltered. Rounding out the update is Apple Intelligence. This is a wide-ranging banner term designed to encompass several smart, predictive features that leverage artificial intelligence to help you. Apple's largely broken it up into a few groups, like three big groups. There's writing tools. So anywhere you type on your Mac, you can access these new aids. Could be in Safari, Chrome, emails, text, notes, pages, Word, anything. Writing tools will proofread your text, rewrite your text, or even change the tone of what you wrote. I got to see a first look at this feature ahead of release, and I was blown away by it especially how it's natively integrated. Next are images. You can use Apple intelligence to generate images throughout your apps. In Keynote, you can generate an image to match your bullet points. In Notes, you can have an image created to demonstrate what's in your lecture. It's all super cool and polished. Finally, Siri is so much better. It understands context and can continue conversations. I use Spotlight for searching for files, but the new Siri sounds even better. I can just ask for all the files Mike sent me last week, and Siri's able to find them whether they were in a text or an email. As a reminder, Apple Intelligence features will be only coming to Apple Silicon Max. So if you're still rocking an Intel model, maybe it's time to upgrade? Anyway, macOS Sequoia is launching this fall. Stay tuned to the channel by subscribing and turning on those notifications so you don't miss any of Apple's other updates. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell which of these wallpaper colors I like best. Okay, green. I'm going green. Committing to green.